We're going to be looking at carboxylic acids for level 2 organic chemistry. Carboxylic acids are all organic molecules which contain the carboxylic acid functional group which I've highlighted here. Some examples of carboxylic acids are shown. Now to name carboxylic acids I need to refer to a table here and what I do is I look for the longest chain of carbon atoms which contains the carboxylic acid functional group. So in this first example I've got three carbon atoms going across so that corresponds to prop. In the second example, it corresponds to pent because I have five carbon atoms going across. Now, in this last example, I look for the longest chain that contains the carboxylic acid functional group, just like I did for the previous two examples. So that is still pent. Now, all carboxylic acids have the ending anoic acid. So this means my first example is propanoic acid. My second example is pentanoic acid. And my last example is also pentanoic acid. But... In this last example, I have a methyl group hanging off. It's a side group. Now, I know it's called a methyl group because it's only one carbon atom long, and one carbon atom corresponds to meth in this table over here. And at the end of meth, I add the letters YL just to show that it's a side group. Now, that's at position four. It's not at position two because the special thing about carboxylic acids is that on the carboxylic acid functional group, that carbon here is always going to be position number one. Now some properties of carboxylic acids is that they're acids. That's a no-brainer. So they'll turn moist blue litmus paper red. Some of the reactions of carboxylic acids are just like your acid type reactions that you guys may have done in year 11 or year 10. So acid and base to make salt and water. Acid and metal for salt and hydrogen gas. Acid and carbonate for salt, water and carbon dioxide. Now some examples of bases you might get are any hydroxide, so NaOH, KOH, calcium hydroxide. Other examples of bases are magnesium oxide, calcium oxide and zinc oxide, so that's metal oxides. Some examples of carbonates, that's things with CO3 in the formula, sodium carbonate, calcium carbonate, copper carbonate, but also bicarbonates or hydrogen carbonates, that's HCO3 in their formula. They act just like carbonates in their reactions. And metals, well, think back to your structure and bonding because that's probably the easiest way for you to ID a metal. In any carboxylic acid, it's this hydrogen here that's donated. Remember, an acid is a hydrogen donor, so it's that hydrogen that's lost when we're trying to work out what the formula of our salt is. So we get rid of the H and we tack on the metal cation from whatever base metal or carbonate that we react it with. So for example, I've highlighted them here. In sodium hydroxide, the metal part would be Na+. In potassium hydroxide, the metal part would be K+. Now you'll notice in that formula, the metal in this particular example had only a plus one charge. So we were only talking about things like sodium plus, lithium plus, and potassium plus. If your metal cation had a two plus charge, say for example, in calcium two plus, magnesium two plus, or iron two plus, then you need to stick brackets around the carbox like anion, that's this big group here. In this example, it's called the propanoate anion. 